This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, with our crew with us once again. Ready to get geeky with us. Everybody's in the studio. Happy day. With us, uh, first of all, he is from Big Bank International Esquire. He's a gadget guru over there. He's John Chichilla. He's checking his gadgets right now. I checking gadget number two. <laughs> You're, I love. I, I, well, hold on, I got. I got. I got to uh, uh, spell out this scenario. I, I'm, I'm getting ready for the show, and over on this desk over here, where you're eating tacos earlier, um, I, I find a. I find a, Sam, a Samsung phone. I'm like, here, you need this, and he says, no, I have my iPhone. I'm like, but this is over here, and this is yours, and I don't want you to forget it. And he said, that's a reminder for the cord that he has over there that he gets it later. Yes. So you just like kind of like pair devices is there oh do your do your devices just have a buddy no no it's, it's a buddy system because see i would i would probably look over at the power cord and say oh that's one of sorgs because there's mul- there's a multitude of power cords laying around yes that n- but none of mine are as nicely re- wrapped as yours <laughs> but i would but i would still probably look at it and go up oh, that must be one of his i'm out of here but not, the, my phone's next to it. It's like, oh, that's mine. I need to grab that. So I, they don't have a... I Are you say mind hacking yourself? My, my devices have a, a permanent buddy. But I will say that I do buddy up my devices when I'm worried about leaving something behind. So when they're on a field trip, everybody have your buddy. Uh, also with us is uh, your, your buddy on the couch over there. Uh, Katie Dudas is with us. Couch buddy. Yay. I, would, so, I wouldn't come to the show without you. Sales and marketing director over at The Scare House. Yeah. Insane. It? Yeah. Yeah. My brain is so squishy. So, <laughs> so, so squishy. squishy. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. This is, this, is a, this is a place for you to unsquish your brain a little bit. Really? <laughs> right? To expand right? your mind. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, this is the awesome cast. We're going to get into some awesome things. It's been, and this is episode 411. It's the informational episode. Sure. I'll go with that. The 411. The 411 episode. Uh, but anyways, mm-hmm. go please uh, check everything out at awesomecast.net. Uh, hit, hit us up on email at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast, awesomecast on the Facebook, and the great Facebook group where you guys are submitting some stories that we'll be getting to later in the show. Also, thank you to our streaming partners, riversedgepgh.com. Uh, they are streaming us there every uh, every Saturday at 9 a.m. And the 405media.com that's carrying us a weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time. And, uh, of course, please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch the video versions on the Facebook and YouTube. And you can join us here live every Tuesday at uh, live and awesome ca- live.awesomecast.net. It'll take you right to the Facebook video page where we go live on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday. Thank you. If you want to be a part of the audience or advertise on the show, please hit up producer Missy over there. Hi, Missy. No, nope, and there's a look. Did nice you one. hear that, Claire? Did you hear that, Claire? Um, <laughs> I hit her up at awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com. Thank you to our Patreon supporters at the Coffee Club $5 level. They get a little bit extra content when, you, when we have a little bit more to say here. Uh, Matt Weller and John Dickey DeGore. And at the fan of the show, $1 level, uh, Michael Fedor uh, as well. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast, where you guys are literally helping us keep the lights on on so let's get into our awesome things of the week um let's uh katie let's start with yours you're yeah. you're sort of talking with us about cable kind of sort of uh but not completely so i use the xfinity stream tv app and i won't mention sort of logins or credentials but i use that in particular app uh to you know watch live cable television uh most channels not all are available when i'm not in the home network and also you can watch some episodes of certain shows 
the one feature that it was missing is finally there. It's the, the, the continuation of play to the next episode. Mm -hmm. Because that's like the best thing about Netflix is you could just turn on Netflix and you're just like... Doop, doop, doop. Now it's doing that. It's going from one episode to the next episode if there's episodes available uh, online. Oh, so it's giving you like your on-demand, mm -hmm. like your on-demand catalog in a Netflix-like experience? Yeah. Well, because you could do it before where you could watch it, but you would have to go back in, select the next episode. Now you just let it go. And depending on how many episodes are there, you get a couple at a least. But... After like a couple episodes, does it say, hey, are you still there? Would no, you like I don't to know. continue <laughs> playing? Because I get that constantly on Netflix. <laughs> yes, I'm there. Please stop asking me. Thanks for checking on me, Netflix. But yeah, so I was, that was one of the things that I thought that app was missing that it mm. finally got. It did also update to most of, instead of being text-based when you're looking up the on-demand shows, there are video, like like the thumbnail videos. So it's a little bit harder to search through them quickly to find like what episode you're watching and stuff like that. But it also starts at the end of every episode if you've already watched it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are still some buggy things because it's Xfinity. What did we expect? But, um, yeah, so they got one thing going for them, a new thing. Yeah, the app has been kind of um, kind of growing over, over mm -hmm. time here. Uh, it's been really I, – I also have a similar kind of sort of access to the app as well. And, um, <laughs> and it, it, it's been interesting. Ooh, that's, that series is on there. Because um, now, you know, I watch the wrestling stuff on there, and sometimes, like, some of the shows are, are there the next – day some of them they don't show up for a week and i've had to buy them on app on apple pocket or yeah on itunes um so you know that's been a little rough for me although i see that preacher is on here so maybe it is time for me to get rid of my hulu subscription Ooh. let's see is smackdown on here if smackdown's on here i might be making a uh trim to my uh no no oh, there is a smackdown on here if that is recent episodes, oh man! Yeah, I think I just changed a little bit about how I do things now. We'll see if that's up tomorrow morning. I'm going to cancel my Hulu account. Uh -oh. It's nice to have the no commercials, but I mean, really, Xfinity commercials aren't half bad. I love but when Direct TV commercials show up in Xfinity. <laughs> it's almost all the time, and it makes me laugh. And like, cut it, cable. But it used to be. But Hulu gives you the whole back archive, doesn't it? Uh, it's been sketchy lately. Oh, no. It's oh, really been sketchy lately. It's like the on demand. I remember like the Comcast on demand when I used to have Comcast was like you got like the last. Mm -hmm. You you didn't get it for like a week. The, the only thing is like until uh, a week after, and then it only went back like three episodes. Yeah, or something like it that. gets weird. It depends yeah. on the show mm -hmm. for the most part. We were watching Ms. and Mrs. on there, but all that's going to be probably available on here now. So why are we doubling things up? That's an extra twelve bucks. I don't need to spend every week because oh, they, they've taken like because everything that I used to pay for Hulu for was like Daily Show and uh, all the CW stuff, and they took it all away. The, the the providers did the mm -hmm. providers to pull their stuff off of Hulu. The only thing is uh, Castle Rock. I I need to catch Castle Rock because we have a friend that was actually a part of season one. Uh, so uh, as soon as I finish that, I think I'm going to can it. When the CW app doesn't it have? They just do all their stuff. Yeah, but again, it's a rolling thing, and we we lost you only it. Get the couple. The ads get yeah. real annoying because sometimes it's just like the same one every time, and it's real bad. And we just we just wait for it to come on Netflix now. We've been, uh. we've been binging through last season of all the CW stuff, so we're just kind of out of that cycle now of watching things new, unless it's unless it's wrestling. Honestly, at this point. So you're still catching up on Arrow, Flash. Yeah, Supergirl. I'm about into February on that, and I'm doing the whole like watch list. <laughs> as it came out because oh, so you're because like, we would they had the episode about where that character where that toy popped up and then that that turns out that was a whole arc to something that was earlier in, in uh, legends of tomorrow uh that that popped up over in flash and i'm just like oh wait i saw that guy in a title we need to go back to legends of tomorrow and see what all that was about mm -hmm. it wasn't entirely connected but there's still a lot of references yeah so. they, they definitely they, they don't make it where it's required that you watch no, the other just ones. just like well-written comic books, right? But yeah. You're rewarded for it. It's definitely a reward. So, um, so, <clears throat> so, uh, Katie, has, has, you know, the shows you're watching, because, again, I'm mostly watching wrestling shows. Yeah. So there's, um, um, like, Pop TV has the same commercial for ER all the time. <laughs> like, stuff like that. Like, it, it hasn't been too rough with it. No. With, with commercials. They're not too annoying on no, that. No, I don't think so. There's usually, like, three sections in a half-hour show. Yeah. But which isn't terrible, like right after the the beginning credits and, or whatever that's called, the intro, and then a couple more in between. So, I mean, it's not terrible, but 
it's i mean it's worth it <laughs> there you go i don't mind it especially since yeah especially if you have the access to something like that so um and well most a lot of people have access to xfinity i guess at this point so awesome yeah. do, do you know do they offer an, an apple tv app Ooh. No, last no. I knew, because I, so. uh, I was hooking my mom up with her, with her Xfinity <coughs> stuff, and she has Roku's. Remember, she has like the four Roku's that weren't hooked up, um, and there's an app for it, but it was like deprecated or something, and maybe you still have to pay a fee to have access to it. Well, so. Xfinity has a bunch of different apps, which mm-hmm. is really odd. That's what Verizon yeah. FiOS is yeah. like. There's like there's your account app, and there's the TV app, yeah. and then there's there's the, the remote app. Yeah, that's like, just too much. Hmm. All right. Uh, Chilla, what's your awesome thing of the week? So my awesome thing of the week is Microsoft made an announcement. I think I noticed it last Thursday. Um, They're changing the terms and conditions of Office 365 home and personal accounts. Um, So if you remember personal, it was meant for one person and you could activate up to two devices. Um, Home was for up to five users and they you could do 10 devices. Um, across those users so for the same price as what you're paying today whether which whatever plat whatever subscription you're on and this is for home and personal this isn't for enterprise um, starting october 2nd you can install office on an unlimited number of devices and be signed in, but you can only be simultaneously signed into your account on up to five devices at the same time, mm. which I thought was pretty nice. We talked about this. You were saying you kind of go through the same thing sometimes with the Adobe Suite. You just get the prompt, hey, you're logged in on what? Did you two, say? Devices. two devices. They allow you two licenses. So, <clears throat> and so if we had like you know, for a small business, it's, it's fine to spread across like all of our computers and and there's two of us working on it so we don't really spread that out too much and i know other outfits that just kind of spread the password amongst everybody that belongs to a collective and stuff and i don't think that's outside of the realm of what you're supposed to do with it mm-hmm. at least it doesn't extend too far um so yeah it, it's it's been interesting um so go ahead but 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 in addition to the like the number of devices that you can install they're also increasing the number of users that you can have on the account on the home or i'm sorry on the yeah on the home account Mm -hmm. so it used to be you could have up to five people on the home account you can now have six which for each one of those home users you get one terabyte of one drive storage so producer missy has an office account a personal office account, right? A personal office. Personal, account. like a, which I think you were saying that we can which spread. Link to one email one address. Email. Okay. Unlimited devices to active. Okay, so that that is just hers. This isn't, but I, I can't also link my email to her and get this other. You bit. need the home account. But she does have a terabyte terabyte of, of data. Yes. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I use the home account because it's kind of split between a couple different people. Not that we all reside in the same home, probably kind of like the Xfinity, <laughs> the Xfinity conversation from a few moments ago. But um, yeah, so this will allow me to get a sixth person on there, all sharing, all sharing the same account. I think it's, I usually get it. I think it's like ninety nine or nine dollars ninety nine cents a month. I pay for it yearly, so I think I usually get in on a Christmas deal where it's. Where it's like a hundred bucks for the year, or less than a hundred, maybe seventy-five bucks for the year. A lot of times you'll see like buy three months, get three months free. You can stack those. So if you ever see those deals running, you can buy like three unlock keys and stack them. Um, so I've done that in the past too. Um, but no, I'm I'm pretty impressed with this. And OneDrive, you can share with anyone, right? Um, so you can share that share your documents kind of like you do in google drive but this is one terabyte um then the other thing if you remember last week we talked about them uh transcribing and doing a bunch of search you could do a bunch of search on your videos Mm -hmm. that obviously works in this service as well um so look for this coming in october um and it's the same price so you shouldn't see any price increase you're just going to get more licensing Awesome. Some nice expansion there. Cool. 
So we're sharing we're sharing all the services this week. Yes. <laughs> um, I had something a little different. This is going to be a little bit of a crossover. I'm sure we'll talk about this at more length on the next show. But I, I got to be. This is not so techy, other than just kind of trying to cover this. And I don't know if the bandwidth is it's a little fuzzy right now. I think if you look at the video uh, when I pull this up, uh, if you're joining us there. Um, but I got to take part in documenting a Guinness World Record attempt. Uh, if you're on our video, you can see the five camera angles that I attempted to get uh, and capture a three ring, 109 person battle royal. That's a lot of beef right there. Hmm? Uh, is it a battle <laughs> royal or a battle royale? A bat- oh, no, battle royale is Fortnite. You know, okay. you're not the first person that's asked that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was actually lifting the night of, and then they were like, oh, yeah, I just filmed the Battle Royals. Like, like Fortnite? I'm like, no. Yeah. Like wrestling. <laughs> like normal people. <laughs> so I didn't notice earlier the guy that was up on the... On the tower? On the tower. Yeah. I thought he was filming a portion no of no it. no no he jumps from the tower onto so like the entire just, group of yeah, people he was like a sniper he was strategically yeah, yes. placed waiting yes for just like the other Fortnite. Yes. yes just like the other battle royal uh yeah so it's about 30 minutes over it's over on the indie wrestling.us uh, um uh a page for facebook and youtube and uh it was it was cr- quite a spectacle again three rings it, it was a very hot and <laughs> It was a very odd day in West Virginia, just south of Wheeling over there. Um, there was at least one participant there that was also in the previous attempt of 75 people in Sydney, Australia. So, yeah, it was um, it was a lot of fun. A lot of painted faces. Uh, <laughs> so do you, do you think this will start the domino effect of more people competing for this? I don't know, because considering how hard it was to do this one, um, I, I, I don't think this is something that a lot of people will jump on. But, I mean, it could be. You never know. Uh, It's being submitted to Guinness um, with this for, uh, you know, statements and the video proof and everything like that to be verified by them to see if they get the uh, world record um, holding on it. So, yeah, it was it was uh, pretty cool to be be part of um, hopefully a a kind of history making um, attempt there. And uh, we knew a lot of people that were a part of the Battle Royal. Um, It was kind of funny because there's so many people that came out that I didn't even know they were in the battle royal because I was on one side of the <laughs> of the rings. So I'm just like, I didn't know. Like the one guy is like, yeah, I was there and this happened. I'm like, I didn't even know you were in there because I didn't see you on the other side of the 105 other people, you know. So, um, yeah, it was kind of interesting. It was a lot of fun. And uh, also the fun part is like watching uh, some of these guys um, try to still <laughs> – Try, try to get get try to um, uh, get people's attention amongst the hundred and nine people <laughs> is uh, pretty good. And also, there's the one guy was saying like his favorite part is when it starts, and all of a sudden everybody's going ah da 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 da, and you can hear that in the video as well. So a lot of fun, a really cool thing that we were a part of this past weekend. So I wanted to share that with you guys. It's just, I mean, it's just a spectacle. Whether you like pro wrestling or not, just to see like a hundred and nine people in a ring doing this thing you know in an old old junior high um that that's really did, did the tower stay up the whole time the tower no the tower was used later for a tower of doom match that involved 16 people here's the thing they had the battle royal and then they had more matches that 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 had no less than six people in them like four or five mm. more matches so it was kind of like it was kind of crazy like even those are hard i don't know how i'm going to edit this damn thing <laughs> i just I'm, put a camera on each ring and and i roamed around and we got what we got i'm surprised you didn't do like a 360 camera on the inside of the the tower man well i didn't know about the tower i didn't know the tower was going to be there if i did i would have completely brought my 360 camera and done something with it also there's a gopro up there in the middle and as it real right now we're looking at somebody's stomach (laughs) <laughs> um, uh, they, they moved it because they were climbing the tower. And I'm like, I should have known these guys are going to climb it. Cause they're, you know, one thing in wrestling, there's certain guys out there when they see something like a balcony or, or something that they can climb, mm-hmm. they will climb it. So that's something that, you know, one of those things you have to deal with, with pro wrestling. Anyways, you know what? I, Katie, do you have to deal with zombies climbing things in your line of work? Oh, they're climbing and doing all kinds of things. And I know, right? Things apart. Jeez, I have to worry about ones catching on things. I have, I have to worry about wrestlers that catch the venue on fire. Like that's like we had a close call in Cleveland last weekend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, but uh, 
what we do have, because Katie is an expert of zombie wrangling, and we not, may not be pros when it comes to scaring people, but uh, but we do know people who are. Scare House even has a podcast to talk about all sorts of things in the business of haunted attractions. You can find out more, including information on the new season, over at scarehouse.com. And you can find out, you can see the product of, of what's making Katie's mind go to mush. mush. And you can watch it go to mush in action every, uh, every Friday at noon for Scarehouse Weekly when you go up on uh, Facebook Live. Yep. All so, kinds of mush. There you go. What, what did you guys talk about this last Friday? Oh, gosh. Let me think. What was I doing last Friday? Uh, uh, we talked about a, a new uh, character that we debuted in for our promo video and how her costume came together. Was this, is this for the basement video? No, this was uh, this was in uh, Nocturnia 3D. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, new Herb. in Nocturnia. Yep. Oh, yeah. There's some pretty sweet changes in Nocturnia. Nice. This year. I'm excited. Nice. That's always fun to go back to even like the like like um was it Infernal is the last yeah. one Infernal like Darkness that change that, that what's that Infernal Darkness now. Oh, that's right. You're yeah. you're, you're taking it dark. That's awesome. I'm super excited. So everything adapts and everything grows. That's really cool to see. Um, go check it out. Scarehouse.com and scarehousepodcast.com to check Chill out. Chill is going to go, right? Chill. What's that? Where Chill. am I going? Scarehouse. I, I, hopefully I will. I'll go with you, Chilla. You'll go with me to, uh, the, to the basement? Let's go to the basement. Oh, no. dude, I got to do the basement again. I've, 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 I haven't done the basement yet, but I always want to. I'm taking Chilla. That's it. I'm taking done, Chilla. Done. It's happening. It's happening. So... Um, Oh, hey, I want to give a shout out. Dave Potter is in the chat room from Tiny Shutter Podcast. Um, he said, uh, what did it say? The Monday Night Raw was on from last night uh, with the entire two hour and 13 minute show. Wow. That's usually a three hour and 15 minute show if you watch it uh, live. Um, do, 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 do. And you can also use Apple Play to cast um, on Apple TV for the Xfinity app. So, okay. Good to know. I've never tried that before because usually the Xfinity, it's one of those things where it's like, well, the USA Network app is the same thing. We're not going to let you watch live TV on a device that that goes to a TV. Okay. But Apple Cast usually, or Apple Chromecast. And, and uh, uh, yeah, Chromecast. Mirror, like and, the screen, air, yeah, AirPlay mirroring or whatever they want to yeah, call it. Yeah, that stuff. Nothing that's an actual, I go <laughs> to an app and hit mm-hmm. play on something, right? So thanks, Dave Podner, for for doing that. And, and guys, this is probably the time to go check out Tiny Shutter Podcast because they're going to be keeping an eye on all the camera stuff with all the announcements coming up here with the iPhones. So um, we have a couple of submitted things from our uh, Awesome Cast Facebook group. First of all, we have one from Amanda. This was interesting, and we were talking about this a little bit beforehand, Chilla. And uh, this is the uh, it's at traveler get right or get free right as in writing. Um, it is a distracting distraction free laptop. It looks like oh, I miss you saying like a leapfrog laptop, like one of those kind of kid ones that you can get. It, it's it's small. It's very plasticky looking. Um, they're going to be doing crowdfunding on this. And it's, uh, it's, it's supposedly, <laughs> it's designed to help you focus. Um, it's, it's got four weeks of battery life, e-ink screen. If you guys are on audio, it looks like that you took a mini laptop, a kind of a thin laptop, and you put kind of an iPhone screen in the middle. And it's, of course, e- e-ink and everything. Sc- oh, I don't know if you're already down there. If you scroll down, the no more eye strain section has the kind of, to me, the how you want to see what the screen size is versus the picture upside down. These they, screens yeah. don't look... Like yeah, and notice they're not showing much of the screen either. Have you noticed that? Yeah. As if like they're maybe also not, not showing a price. No, they're not. <laughs> they're, they're not. So I mean, but how much can it be? Because it's a keyboard and it's e ink, and there's at least enough computing power. Because they're, they're saying you can connect to Google Drive, Dropbox, and Evernote. So, and and you just pull it up, and and you can you have your word processor and all those uh, to save to, I guess. So. I I guess this is for this is for writers that don't do much else, right? Yes, and the the other thing that I thought was interesting is, is if you look at the form factor, when you think about your typical laptop, like the bottom it's thin. 50% to a third of the bottom like your keyboard, the space that your keyboard takes up on your laptop 
That's how big the screen section is. Yeah. So it would be like well, it would, then, cutting not, off not the, the screen section, the top section. The, the top the section. Screen yeah. Is the still, screen is like the size of a phone. Yeah. The screen is still like like you put your. It's like you took a phone and stuck it in the middle of a laptop screen, and there's just blank plastic on either side of it. There's my problem. There's too much white space. A little bit. I think there. I think there's too much white space. This is going to have to come in at a really low. What worries me is you have like a Kindle e-reader hitting like the $80 price point. Mm -hmm. You have the Chromebook hitting the 99 to 199 Less than two pounds. Yeah, like where is this going to fit in? Document cloud sync through Wi-Fi so you're not going to have cell cell in this or anything? Yeah, like they need, this needs to me to make sense, this needs to come in at like your $50 or under price point. Katie, you're, we're always talking about kind of distraction points and everything like that with social media and stuff. It's kind of what we do. Where, where do you think this kind of fits in on, on that kind of scale? It would force me to not. To n- <laughs> It'd be like blinders. <laughs> it, it kind of is, right? Yeah, literal side blinders. I'm finally <laughs> like going to get to that book I've been waiting to yes, do. That yes, that book I've been waiting to <laughs> <laughs> for the last five years, but so you're telling me that you're not your phone's not going to be sitting right next to you going. Bzz, that's oh, yeah. the problem, right? Bzz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bzz. <laughs> but I think the whole idea is this is this is, I I think if you are a writer by trade, right, it, you know you can work on that thing, take it on the plane, the train, the the uh, bus, the you know whatever. I was trying not to say the plane, the train, the automobile. Thank you, producer Missy. Uh, <laughs> I knew she couldn't help it. But uh, but no, I, I think it's like perfect. It's kind of the perfect answer to something like that. It's not trying to like, if you got a Chromebook, it sometimes it's super underpowered to do anything more than just the writing. But then it's like still you could do all that other stuff, mm-hmm. right? So I think this is definitely uh, it's super niche. It's super niche. It's basically we just kind of boiled everything down to a word processor again. But a really nice one. It is. It don't get me wrong. It, it is nice, but the to me the it's gonna have to come in at a low price point. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm not seeing any indication here on what that's gonna be. I am gonna sign up for the crowdfunding thing though, because I'm kind of curious to see how this goes. Yeah, I joined. Again, I joined. I this is pre. And again, we were talking about no, not much look at the screen. So who knows how much of a actual functioning device this is yet, right? So you you signed up for it too. I did sign up just to be notified. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see how this... And we'll get Katie one for Christmas so out. she can finish that book. Yes. My tell-all. <laughs> Your tell-all book about the... The, the real sword. About the <laughs> scare house gone wild. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, hmm. Did you read the fine print? No. Aww. Okay, so so four weeks of battery life. Yes. Right? With the little asterisk. Scroll down to the bottom. Based on 30 minutes of usage per day. What? <laughs> So you can all you can only write. Hey, if you're distraction okay. free for thirty minutes a day, and let's be honest, when are we distraction free for thirty minutes a day? Mm-hmm. You could probably get a lot done. I think you could you could force yourself to be distraction free for thirty minutes a day on yes. any other device. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> unplug the like, unplug the Wi Fi. Turn off the phone. Who's going through that? Who's going through that bit? I have a put watch your, that tells me put things. Your, but put your put your watch in your phone and do not disturb. I mean, mm. there's. Eight million utilities that, and I guess that's my point, is if this comes in at like a hundred or two hundred dollar price point, you could buy yourself a thirty dollar app that will give you, like that will shut off the hassle and all that kind of stuff, the noise, to give you that mm-hmm. type of focus. Producer Missy is waving at me. Yes, Producer Missy out there. That's what I'm saying. It's a word processor. It really just we're boiling down to a word processor. But it doesn't need to be plugged in all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, no, but we this one doesn't yes. even print. My old word processor <laughs> printed. <laughs> it's because you're just putting it up in the cloud. Ooh. Um, there you go. Uh, this was uh, this is what for Riz. We we're talking about uh, Fortnite and how you could get some of the dance moves and costumes if you uh, logged into demo phones. Apparently, Samsung is not does not appreciate that you are using demo phones to get Fortnite skins. There are the players. <laughs> so they have addressed this apparently. Um, 
this is how you unlock the skin. And I love the article then goes through and tells you how to unlock the skin on a demo phone. Oh, jeez. Um, there are uh, signs that are going up. All Samsung demo phones will not download Fortnite or the skins. Please do not install any information or downloads onto the demo phones. Thank you. This sign that was up in a store, uh, Samsung store. So um, I wonder, how, will the will the phone actually not download Fortnite? But I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't or know. is the sign meant to deter you from not downloading Fortnite? Oh, jeez. You have to do a lot, though. <clears throat> You got to, you got to yeah. down, download the game. You have to download the game. You install it open. Um, installs the Fortnite installer. Da, 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 da. Once logged in, you play three matches of Fortnite on the Tab nine or the Tab S4 or the Note 9. So you have to sit there and play through three games at least. I mean, three they can games be short. goes pretty quick, though. Yeah, but you're like you're you're at least spending ten minutes on this device, and then they're going to start looking at you funny. What I want to know is, well, I'm guessing no. So. Beyond all this, can't you just find a friend that has a Note 9 or an S4? I don't know anybody except you that has a Note 9 or an S4. I don't have I don't have either one. Well, there so. you go. <laughs> you would be the but, one. But if when I do find someone that has one, this is the first thing I'm going to do. We'll just put on Twitter, dear friends, do any of you have one of these devices? And will you let me get the Fortnite skin? I will buy you a coffee to sit Ooh. at a Starbucks and watch me play three matches of Fortnite under my account. <laughs> so... I guess. Anyways, uh, they're not happy about that. So, but it was kind of inevitable because I mean, geez, Fortnite. Um, it, it still blows me whether you're finding like Fortnite shirts at both of you found them them at the beach. Mm-hmm. You found snow cones. Yeah, I know. You found snow I don't coats. even know what that tastes like. What does you, you, didn't, you didn't get the snow no, cone? Did you? No. Oh, for science. <laughs> Jeez. Anyways, well, the other thing that we like to try for sinus is our good friends are supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pieces. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, right up the road here on Broadway from Sorgatron Media Studios, is the OG, the original, as well as their other locations at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Carnegie PA, and over on the East End. Thank you so much for our friends for feeding our guests here on the awesome cast. Uh, as they join us here in studio, and also make sure that Chill is going to at least join us every other week. And he gets this weird mix of pizza and tacos, the Beachview flavor. Tacos. The Beachview it's the, it's flavor. The taste, uh, I like how Missy put it. It's the taste of Beachview. Mm. Pizza and tacos. <clears throat> no other way. So, yeah, check out our friend SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on Twitter, and let them know the awesome cast sent you. All right. Yobo. Yes. What is a Yobo, Dutters? It's exciting. <laughs> Yobo, which if you go to Yobo.com, you're, or yeah, is it Yobo.com? Yeah, if you go to Yobo-app.com, I would suggest doing it in Chrome so it translates. Okay. Uh, it's oh. German. Oh, damn, I'm in Firefox. Yeah, screw Oh, no, that's very German. It's very German. Erste Deck und Bewerte Orte mit Emojis. I know that word. <laughs> Jets <laughs> downloaded. I wonder what that does. <laughs> Magic. I do like the little sign under the uh, Google Play that says soon. They just <laughs> plastered it on there. Yeah, so this isn't a thing in, in near us or even in the U.S. yet, but it's just uh, it's a new company that uh, is trying a different way to talk about instead of like Yelp and TripAdvisor and Google and Foursquare. Uh, essentially, you are kind of rating places based upon photos and using emojis. So it's very, very you know quick and. Oh, well, this so like if you didn't like the food. Can you put like the puke emoji? Oh yeah, or the poop emoji or, poop or something. Emoji. Mm-hmm. So, so this is interesting. I love this presentation of the emojis is this like giant spear. Yeah. You see this thing? It's pretty darn cool. Is and it like you, do you kind of mouse through it like that? That's what I'm guessing. It looks like it. Like it looks like what like the Apple Watch face does a little bit. Mhm. So yeah, you just share places your photos and it's able to take information from the photos. This is supposed to be this is really high techy techy takes information like if you take a picture of a steak it'll recognize that this place serves steak so it's kind of doing its own research because a lot of places uh, they were saying that there was one place in particular there was a bar in oh i forget which country that oh the shed at uh, dulwich uh, number one restaurant on TripAdvisor. the problem was it was a fake london-based restaurant because this writer wanted to prove how easy it was to manipulate places like TripAdvisor, Yelp, and Foursquare. So they, this is kind of trying to counteract that and take information from your photos and uh, make sure that you're actually in that area and actually do what it says it does, like or what they serve. 
but it looks pretty interesting. It's supposed to start um, after a while. It's supposed to get to learn you what you're looking for and suggest places based upon you know what you've puke emoji and not <laughs> poop emoji <laughs> and heart emoji. It just it's really simple. It looks fun. <laughs> I would be into this if it comes over here. It looks like it does look like a lot of fun. Um, I I think. <laughs> It's a, it, but again, it's another one of these apps, right? Oh, so yeah. how long is it going to last? Mm-hmm. So even like Instagram TV, I noticed has been kind of maybe not taking off when we're putting up extra things like this. But I, I so so it's is Foursquare still doing well or Swarm or whatever? I don't know. I tend to use Google. I think Maps. other people are sourcing the data and they're sourcing data back. Mm. Mm. So I'm guessing they're doing well, but they're not doing. They're not like Surface doing well. Yeah, they're, yeah they're, they're not like the social media experience they once were. Mm-hmm. But I'm guessing, I'm trying to think what I was watching. I, guess or, the, the, I was using something and it said like powered by Foursquare. Yeah, yeah, like there's a lot of that going on. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, how we, it's by kinda like everything's powered by Yelp now, right? Yeah. Like, like something like this. I guess, I guess really the, 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 the I, I'm curious to see how the food identification works. And why isn't that in like a calorie counter app? Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. I want to be able to take a, a, a picture of the sandwich and it tells me that's how many calories I'm eating. How does it know what's on the inside of the sandwich? Do you have to open it up? Do you have to go through each <laughs> layer of the sandwich? <laughs> you know, so hold on. What happens you... if I hit a big, big, like, pocket of lard in the center of the <laughs> sandwich? Ooh. What are you eating? Chilla, we I, have to talk just, about I'm your just, diet. I'm just thinking, like, I, what I if I stuck a lollipop the in the middle of my hamburger? Mm. Like, I, that's where I, like, I think restaurants so things like the weight watchers and and some of the other apps they have the barcode scanning where you can scan the barcode of any package and it gives you <laughs> calorie count and <laughs> missy just texts me ho ho hamburger <laughs> <laughs> but, but um identify this <laughs> but but like I think what should so we scan a lot of the barcodes on our pre prepped foods. Mm-hmm. What I think would be helpful is if restaurants just barcoded their menus where you could scan the barcode in the menu and as so long you as just want a menu see. that's all QR codes. Yeah. <laughs> well I want the description. That's but, yeah, it's actually but, useful though, because Q, okay. I think we're I think we're past the point where QR codes are kind of a oh god it's on every ad They're i think qr being... codes are going to make a huge comeback personally. really i think we're going to see a qr code revival really you're, you're nodding your head a little bit over there katie oh i think so yeah i wouldn't be surprised i think i think qr so, codes they, they were too early to market mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and not enough people had mobile devices and now and, like the camera app yes does it now like it, it identifies it and says open this in safari mm-hmm. yep but, i think qr codes are gonna but i think most people don't know that Yet, but I think what they're gonna, I think what you're going to see is you're going to see a QR code on the wall with a little picture of your camera app next to it, mm. and people are going to be like, "I oh, should take a picture, picture of this. Mm. <laughs> I should be photographed and see what happens." That, like that's where I think the, pol- the there wasn't enough proliferation of the mobile device technology, like what seven years ago when they tried to do this. Like I remember seeing like. Different magazines all had QR codes in them. Mm-hmm. Like I think they were a little bit too early. Yes, Where and I- then there was the QCAT in like '98. <laughs> Yes, the QCAT. <laughs> the QCAT. And for those, I know we've talked about this multiple times over the years on this show. I have one still. I had it in the old studio. Um, it's a cat-shaped QR, uh, a, a barcode scanner. And there was going to be a special barcode that was on... Uh, like cereal boxes and cans of soup or whatever. And that would go to what QR codes do now. It would go to a website. Mm-hmm. Radio Shack was giving these away for free. Everybody snagged them up and hacked them to do other things like catalog my CDs, <laughs> so, you know, things like that. So we ran out and grabbed some and really didn't do much with them, except like maybe do a barcode on a can of soup. So, Ooh. yeah. But, but I could also see like, it's only taken 20 mm-hmm. years. Where technology is getting enough, getting to the point where also where you can't expect all technology to be 100% user friendly. Right. So to have a QR code next to something that gives instructions on 
how to use it or but also it's context like there's qr codes when you go to um when you go to the pa pinball hall of fame up in aliquippa there's pin, there's barcodes on a lot of the machines and it pops up a web page right? right so you're in that thing and there's like a bunch of them and say hey you do this or you know, you're at an apple store you're at a, a best buy you're at something like this you're in the context to do something like that but or even um i think zoos and museums have been really good about this too recently um, but again, a little bit of like, here's a mass of like, Hey, there's a bunch of these. It's just, not just randomly. I like found a QR code on my coffee cup. What does this do? Mm-hmm. Although that'd be fun if I just had a QR code on a, on a cup and then you could like scan it whenever I take a drink here during the show mm-hmm. and it goes to some mystery place that maybe gives you like a free, a free, a free digital download or something of something that we offer. What, what Ooh, I wonder, that's how, a, that's how, a nice little Easter egg. I should work that in. So how long will it take for people to start getting tattoos of QR codes that oh, take you a, to their personal That website? has happened. Come on. That is definitely. I, I, hold on a second. It. Do you have one? Or is that what I you're saying? I don't have one, but if I'm going to get a tattoo. Is it on your butt like a Care Bear? <gasps> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean on my butt like a Care Bear? Like the Care Bears had the little heart. Oh, they did butt. have the little heart. Yeah, it was a little to heart. To say they were like an authentic there. Care Bear? Yeah, yeah. Because it's on the back of his neck like Hitman. It's on the back of my neck like Hitman. Um, or the plug for for uh, Neo QR and Matrix. code tattoo. Three things to know before you get one. Make sure you keep that domain registered. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you pay for it. Uh, hire an expert tattoo artist. Okay. Choose permanent con- content. Okay. <laughs> Ensure high scannability. Add error correction. Get the tattoo on a flat area. So maybe not on your bald head. She's uh, just like, like all across my head is a giant QR code like Bam Bam Bigelow. <laughs> there you go. That's a style right there. Uh, how the hell did we get here? I have no idea. What are we talking about? QR, QR code codes. shaved into the Do back we get of here from Yobo? I think so. Yeah, yeah because yeah. it took us then to to Foursquare. Is Foursquare still around? Mm. And, and then we were scanning our food. That's and then what we it were was. scanning our food. That's okay. Right. Yes. Wow, we went deep down the rabbit hole on that one. Okay, bringing it back around. Boo. <laughs> um, this was a fun one I got to share. And uh, uh, this, this is Acer's Predator Thronos cockpit masquerading as a game chair. It looks like, I mean, it kind of looks like one of those pods that you used to play like the Battletech Mech Warrior games in. Mm-hmm. And it is pretty darn cool. It's got three screens. It's, it's got like this um, kind of circle like arm thing that comes over your head that holds up the screens. And I believe it kind of like moves to the side and moves the screens up so you can get in and out of it. Um, it, it, it and it's, it's, it's a, the PC is part of it, I guess, uh, off to the side. It's a nice gaming chair. You're wearing headphones, but it has a little bit of speakers, but you're probably going to want to still wear headphones. It's got a desk for your mouse and keyboard. They're playing some Tomb Raider on here uh, as the sample over on on, on Gadget. Um, I, I, I connected. I, I tagged our friends at Looking for Group uh, and says, hey, you guys probably should look into getting some of these for your next round of uh, computer upgrades. And they said, oh, I don't know if we can fit it in there, uh, but they want to try. That's so, a thick bezel that is <laughs> what, 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 what the screen yeah like the to me it's the the screens are meant to look like they're all one even though we know they're three yeah and they didn't like, like they, they, they didn't bother thick, they didn't bother putting them together much right yeah they yeah there's there's like a the screen has a thick bezel mm-hmm. and b there there's they've kind of left gaps um, maybe it's from it going up and down and it's a demo unit but that could be i would think that they could do better with i mean i've seen some 40 three inch wide curved glass screens like single that's where they cut the cost in this thing that's going to be like ten thousand dollars probably yeah so i mean i mean this is a high-end thing this is the um so you're getting two is what you're telling me yeah right yeah but that's all that's going to fit in here um but we're just going to turn this into a two cockpit uh uh, (laughs) coming to you from cockpit number one yes (laughs) welcome to the podcasting cockpit there you go Oh, that, there's an idea. There is an idea. Um, but this is, um, it, it's, I think, due out by the end of the year, they said. Um, there is a, oh, you can also fit three 27-inch monitors. I think that's the ones they were ta- showing there. Um, and I think that's also, you attach them. I don't think they necessarily comes with it. And they actually do not have a price for this. I believe this is, this is an IFA. Uh, situation. All you get is like the arm and the chair. 
you supply your own PC, your own screen. I mean, this is going to become kind of funny to me if that's what it if that's truly what it is. If, it, it, you might as well put your own rig together at that point in time. Let's see. They don't have pricing for it yet, but say they'll be released by the end of the year, according to this article. So, yeah, that it, it, it's still like probably not perfect, but still kind of a cool concept. So I understand Skype is uh, adding a feature that podcasters have wanted for the last ten years. Yeah, <laughs> finally. Jeez. Well, this is what, this, what makes me wonder is, will this drive new podcasters to the platform? I think people that already have their own their own setup and their own way of doing things, mm -hmm. or if you're disgruntled, maybe with Hangout or whatever you're using, maybe you would switch to Skype. Um, what I actually thought was interesting about this was, and we've we've gone through this before, trying to set up like third and fourth party audio recording as a backup to our podcast. Like when you've been remote before, right? We've we've jumped on additional applications to handle the audio recording, right? In addition to like the Hangout recording, right? Um, Skype, all the recording is done in the cloud. The cloud. So with the cloud. And it'll be auto-transcribed because it'll go to your OneDrive. Oh, there um, you go, Azure and everything. Yeah, but it, it's stored in the cloud, which I kind of like. So there's no one PC endpoint that's trying to keep up with the so audio it, recording, it, the video recording, and all that. So it is like the recording of Google Hangout where it's <laughs> happening on their servers. You don't have to worry about the lack of whatever computer you have locally. Yeah, you say, say you were the one doing the recording in the olden days, right? And you mm -hmm. dropped... Well, then the show can still go on because it's still being recorded with everyone else that's still connected. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that I liked about this was is so it saves off. Everyone's notified via a screen icon or banner. Excuse me. To let them know that they're being recorded. So you can't just willy nilly record people without them knowing. And then it rec it saves it in the cloud and can be shared for up to 30 days with your Skype contacts, or it can be downloaded um, via the the desktop app or even the mobile app. Mm -hmm. So what I kind of like about this too is, right, I can do it. You could have everyone on a phone in the Skype session doing the show and then run and grab the cloud version video that I'm sure is going to be much nicer looking than the the format you're getting on a small form factor device that you could then pump into like an iPad or some type of mobile device to then pull back apart and, mm. and produce off from. So I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and there's no charge. No charge. No nice. charge. Much like Teams, no charge. <laughs> um, that's a cool option. I like to play with it and see what the results kind of look like. Because um, we, I mean, this is for some reason it was brought up recently. Um, Blab, remember that Blab.im mm -hmm. was kind of like the four, the four up calling, and it, it recorded the video and everything. We were, we were actually considering replacing Hangouts with that. Hey, they didn't last, by the way. They're not around anymore. Um, but uh, but it'd, it'd be interesting to see what this what comes out of this. Also, like that, that's probably gonna be nice for like saving like like conference meetings and everything, right? Because um, then it would be well. trans because it'd be transcribed transcribed to as well. Yeah. And the, oh, and the other thing that they save in there, they said when they save the recording, the chat is also saved. So if you had a if you had a chat going with like links being passed back and forth or information, I swear Hulu is all. listening to this podcast because I just got an email from them. Hey, we got <laughs> movies. Don't you want to watch Jerry Maguire? Uh, we heard you were thought about quitting. <laughs> yeah, heard you. You've been realized you've been getting the same things as somewhere else this entire time, and we still like you to give us money. Uh, anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, <laughs> awesome. So uh, Skype updates. Uh, Kate, are you using Skype for anything on your side? No. No? Is it, you're not, no. Your meetings are all in person. Yep. Yes. Bless Hello, you. Hello, God bless you. Oh, thank you. And then Chilla is gone. I tried, I tried to shut the mic off. That's all right. Now it's still off. There you are. Oh, I tried to set the no mic, shut the mic off. Yeah, well, no, it worked. We just heard you on every other microphone because <laughs> it was that loud. Um, <laughs> Chrome's, uh, Chrome, uh, Google Chrome's getting a, uh, a uh, redesign. So after yeah, after ten years, um, we're going. I, and I'm I, I couldn't find what redesign number this was. I think we've only this is only like number three. Um, and to me, there's not that much of a of a difference. Um, if you if you scroll through the pictures down underneath 
the main graphic, it'll actually alter so the... So it's, I mean, it's the edges are kind of rounded. different angles and rounded and stuff. It's not going to be a stark contrast to like the last time that Firefox was redesigned or anything. So. Yeah, but I noticed the Google... But still. The, like the main Google Ooh. page now has rounded icons, which I yeah, thought was interesting. Yeah, that is kind of cool. Um, which one? Did I, the, the one thing I liked is the also the your pull-down menu with your picture... There's a, like there's more options. I felt like I always had to go three clicks deep to get yeah. to certain things. There's like no like file preferences yes. kind of thing whenever you go look for something. So now so now there'll be some additional information in the drop down, which I thought was nice. Um, to me, the rounded corners and I, I mean that's great. Um, but I don't know. I, I I'm, I'm happy they're trying to keep up with what's going on and. Moving forward with their UI. That's good. Uh, and I guess they'll, they'll roll out soon, right? I got it today. You got it today? Build 69. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, it was a light week for news. It's everybody, everybody's gearing up for that Apple announcement in a couple of weeks, it seems like. Yeah, and I, I think, and then we'll, I think, I feel like Apple kicks off the news. The large news cycle, because we'll go from them to probably some Amazon announcement, Microsoft announcement, and Google announcement. All right. Maybe not necessarily in that order. Are Maybe you... we should give some credit to, to Samsung, because they kicked off right And I guess Apple. that'll be next Wednesday, so we'll actually try not to talk about iPhones the day before the iPhone announcement. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some. I'll, I'll be surprised if there's not some serious leak. I feel like I feel like there already have been, but I don't trust anything until I've seen it announced. Yeah, but I feel like there's some leaks you can tell are like, oh, that person did get the deck ahead of time, and there's other <laughs> ones that like that's an artist conception. I'm also off upgrade uh, cycle since we just upgraded all of our phones, so I'm kind of just like, oh, that'll be nice. That'll be nice next time around, you know. So uh, I'm more interested. In, you know, I'm kind of more interested to see what features kind of pop out for iOS. Uh, twelve, like that. That some last minute things that may pop up. Well, and you still you still use a number of older devices as like secondary video and all yeah, that. yeah. I'm so, using. I'm still <clears throat> using that iPad third generation at my desk since the, uh, ah, the iPad Pro is uh in the shop in California. The third generation isn't getting iOS twelve, unfortunately. No, nope. I've seen a lot. Rocking of, my iOS seven, baby. <laughs> I've seen some like old iPhone. What the five S gets it. I think wow. like, some, like the six. What the one thing that I noticed is the six. I loaded the beta on the six, and it's it is seriously faster. Like they lifted some of the crust. We'll see how that lasts. Um, be off there, so be interesting to see. All right, we're we're like a week and a half. No, we're about a week out. Katie, are you excited for anything iPhone wise or other than? Please don't make me hate that I have last year's iPhone. No, please don't. I'm I can upgrade every year. Oh, yeah, you're so, on that one. Yeah, I'm fancy. She's the cool. I oh, am. So yeah, sure. Why not? If the it's new a, hotness. I, I'll tell you what. I, I do have to admit that my case is beyond destroyed. It's a Tech 21 case, which is supposed to be pretty good. And you have an iPhone 10. Yeah. And the knock on wood, the phone has been fine. Um, I got paint all over the screen. It wipes right off because it's a glass screen. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I mean, you can see the cover back is obviously trash, but yeah. Phone's still ticking. Yeah. I'm I'm not... I'm actually more interested in what do they do with the next gen iPad Pro. Ooh. I'm le- I'm on it, to be honest with you. I'm less interested in what they're going to do with the phone this year, and more interested in I think the, the the iPad next gen, and what are they doing with a new MacBook or the MacBook please, Air? Please, please release a new MacBook. You want a new Pro? Or I want a, I want a Mini. I honestly oh, want a Mac Mini. What are they? Do? I don't want to. I don't want to have to get an iMac Pro or, or an iMac. I want. I want an upgrade to a Mac Mini because I am in the market to buy at least two Mac Minis for things that we want to do in the next few months. So that's what I want, but I don't want to buy one that's like four years old technology. The announcement's gonna, it's gonna come out, and they're gonna be like, and coming out in January. Ah! <laughs> but I mean, I mean, it's not. It's, Okay, I'm not required to have it by the end of the year, but it's a nice to have, mm-hmm. right? But it's just been like, man, I really love to not take this tower with me anymore. I could really use a Mac Mini, but 
And also, I'm wondering if I can replace my hard drive in my 2011 Mac Mini and do a purpose too. But anyways, other than that, oh, but, I've uh, replaced I I replaced the hard drive. In my have because I'm trying to figure out yeah. if, that's, if that's what the problem is with it. Yeah, um, it's not too bad at all. And I and I haven't gotten that deep into it. So that was the easiest it. part. Yeah. of <laughs> <laughs> So that's true. Well, other than the memory, I'm sure. But um, that's probably all you can because it's before like, they still don't solder anything into Mac Minis, right? Like as far as hard drives go, I don't know. I haven't seen like the newer. Mm-mm. No, but I mean, even that after was... the first res, or after the first rev of the short stack silver. Mm-hmm. Like so, they went from the thick white with the CD DVD writer mm-hmm. to the slim down silver box. Right. Even the first gen of that, I know but the even bottom. Even then, I went from an opened. iMac, a 2007 iMac, to a 2011 Mac Mini. Like that was an upgrade, right? Mm-hmm. And that's all I needed, right? And uh, and I think I was hooking that up to like maybe the CRT or something maybe. Um, so I remember I was taking the Mac Mini. It was in my office, and I I took it down to the basement studio and plugged it in, and we did the show. And then I took it back up to the office to edit the <laughs> show. That was one of the great things, and still probably not the best thing to do with the Mac Mini. But now I want to mount it in the case and the switcher and have everything together and do this and that and. Get a couple of them in there, so I have one for. I have an idea for somebody gave me for a replay machine and everything. Yeah, no, we. It's if, if I have my way, we'll have like three Mac Minis floating around jobs in the in the near future. So, but but again, you don't want the old ones. You want like if we're going to get one, let's get for the same price something from this year, right? Mm-hmm. So, anyways, hey, want to give a shout out to another supporter of the show, our friend. Alexander Cars, K A H R S. Alexander Cars, our friend out in California. Um, wow, this may be a flyover state podcast as far as technology goes, is the intention. Uh, it's really cool that we do have our friends across the country that are listening and checking us out. Uh, we are sorry when we talk very Pittsburgh things. But Alex, he's uh, putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print to digital projects. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. You can check it out at alexandercars.com and alexcars.media to get started. And uh, he's done a lot of great stuff. T-shirts uh, for some of the properties around here, as well as websites and DVD covers. Thank you so much, Alex Cars. Check him out, alexcars.media. All right. Um, from that, we have, what do we have going on? Game night is coming up here, guys. Holy crap. Did you guys see the picture from game night last week? <laughs> I didn't. I think I did. We had Jumanji night, and we had something like 15 people in here. Um, so game night was a pretty good success this past month. It's coming back on the 19th. If you're in the area, join us down here at the Sorgatron Media Studio in Beachview, and uh, we will uh, and we will we'll be playing some games. A lot of people want to bring games. I have I found some new stuff. I found WWE Legend Uno because that came up in a discussion on the wrestling board. So that'll be here. We were playing this Ninja Turtles game that I had never played before. But I think it was gifted to me a while ago. Um, that it looks like it gets pretty deep and intense, like well, with hit points and everything. We played the simple version, um, and uh, and also Pittsburgh PodCon is scheduled for the 30th International Podcast Day. Uh, there's going to be a lot of special stuff going on there. Uh, check out the information for that. Look up the Pittsburgh PodCon on your Facebook for the event and get updates on that and location and everything as well. So, uh, Katie, what's going on with the Scare House? You're just gearing up. Yeah. Actually, so we do a contest every Tuesday where we give away a pair of tickets and I usually put out some ridiculous question and get ridiculous answers and I love it. This week I had people post on Facebook because I do it on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. On Facebook and Twitter, I asked them to post their favorite animal or funny gif to help us get us through the last week. And then on Instagram, I asked people to post their corniest joke. And then we just randomly select a winner. And it's the thing. It's, it's making me so incredibly happy because it's just like cute animal gifts and funny, stupid jokes on all of my social right now. <laughs> <laughs> I figured out a way to hack social media and make it happy. <laughs> there you go. Hey, you have the power to do it, right? Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's, it is, here's the here's the post from today if you guys are on video with us. It's just you guys just hanging out outside, it looks like. Yeah, we're just hanging and out. And there's just... Today animal gifts all over the place <laughs> it's amazing here. that's amazing i guess these are probably the top yeah these are most relevant i guess <laughs> so go check that out in the scare house and know if there's something weird happening it's probably katie doing it yep. k dutters on the twitter yep that's me and of course at chilla on the twitters john chill on the facebook chillatech.net 
That's where you can find me. There you go. Let, let's all get together next week and talk Apple. <laughs> yeah, After exactly. the show. After the show. <laughs> We'll see what we can do with that. And at Sorgatron on the Twitter, please check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great podcasts going on there. Actually, here in the studio, if you guys want to tune in, our friends, our neighbors up the street, Pittsburgh Current is starting their new podcast. We're going to be recording on their Facebook page on Facebook Live, so you can join in and hop in the chat room there. We're going to be doing with them kind of what we do here with the Awesome Cast, I think. Uh, so looking forward with uh, uh, to see uh, how that goes and, and uh, uh, you know, get a little bit in on, on one of the newest publications here. Just released their third issue, and I know they just featured, well, we, uh, Sorgatron Media got featured in the uh, second issue when the... Uh, in the uh, neighborhood spotlight, and uh, we ran an ad in their first one for Psychic Media Services. So uh, awesome to see them, and uh, we're going to be supporting each other here and doing something really cool, I think. So stay tuned for that, PittsburghCurrent.com, uh, for uh, that kind of stuff going on, too. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody in the chat room that's been joining us. What's up, Dave and Brandon and everybody else that's popped in throughout the evening. Uh, thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.